Hello, and welcome back to my little dungeon, or my study, or the uh, dad cave, or man cave, depending on what mood I'm in and whether my wife is listening. Um, I have decided I'm going to build an internet radio, but I know you can buy these things online for a hundred euro, two hundred dollars, you know, I mean, loads of people make them, Sonus makes nice little units, expensive, but really, really nice, but way out of my price range. Um, Linksys used to make them. Uh, oh look, Linksys. Netgear makes them. Um, I mean, even Morphe Richards makes them, which is, you know, your your average household stuff. But I decided I want to make my own. And what do you need to make yourself an internet radio? Well, you need an internet connection. You need something to connect to the internet. And you need a means of playing the audio. So, I think I've got everything I need for that. So, I... Uh, yeah, so this is the basic idea, right? Is I'm going to make two. One for my little two and a half year old daughter, because she loves music, and uh, I've got a little bit of an idea for an ongoing on uh, for an ongoing series of projects and uh, wand activated devices. So I'm going to take a little fairy wand, I suppose, for want of a better word, um, and I'm going to stick magnets in the tip. And then I'm going to enable a bunch of devices around the house, such as her radio, um, that have read switches in them, so little magnetic switches in them, so that she can tap them with a little wand, and um, they will magically turn on. Well, they'll appear magic to a two and a half year old, but to uh, anybody who knows what a read switch is, they all they all know exactly how it works. So step one in this. Uh, project would be to build a radio. So this is going to be a multi-part one. Um, I don't think I'm going to get enough of this done in a single shot or in a single part, so we'll start with the basics. Um, I've picked a Linksys WRT54G. These are old. Um, these are awesome. They were awesome. They're still awesome. And I literally have a ton of them in a drawer here that I shipped to Australia and I didn't really think that one through. So now I have to use them because they're taking up space and I'm never going to use them for actually, you know, doing things like being a Wi-Fi wi AP or anything like that, but I have enough of them to make little radios out of them. So we got the Linksys, Ray, good old reliable Linksys. Um, now to make the audio come out of this, of course, there's no USB ports back there. There's no audio output. What are you going to do with it? I am going to install a USB port in this Linksys. In this awesome WRT54G. Um, so, what do you need for USB? Well, you need to make sure that the chipset supports USB, which it does. It just doesn't have an actual port or a USB controller or anything in there. But the pins are there, they can be used. What else do you need for a USB device? You need power. And anybody who's ever charged anything off USB knows that a USB port is 5 volts. But this takes a 12 volt power supply. A little bit tricky, but that's not a problem. Because what we can do is we can build a 5 volt regulator that takes the 12 volts that go in and converts it down to 5 volts just for us to use for the USB port that I'm about to install. So, let's build a 5 volt regulator. First thing you'll need is a 5 volt regulator. And here we have a LM7805. Yeah, pretty simple, very standard. Anybody who's worked with Arduino or anything knows what these things look like. A um, little bit of perf board there to mount everything on. We'll need two capacitors for this. So I have a 10 microfarad and a 1 microfarad. And I've decided I want to put a little light on it so I can actually tell when the 5 volt regulator is working. So here's a little green LED and here's a 680 ohm resistor which is calculated to work with that particular green LED at 5 volts. Perfect. Then what we need to do is we need to get this guy open which is pretty simple. That warranty void sticker was 
destroyed about five minutes after I received this. Oh, look at that. I've already been at this one. I have attempted to install a serial console on this one. That's handy. Not that we'll need it for this one, but that's great. Let's take the antennas off. These just unscrew. And... There we are, there's the board. That comes off, there's just a single screw. Where's the screw? There it is. There it is. Anyway, since I have so many of these around, I've already prepared this one. So this is a version 2 WRT54G. It has the Broadcom BCM4712KPB and this guy actually has two USB ports on it, but uh, let's use one of these guys to do pointing. You can see these resistors along here uh, in the camera. I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing at. These resistors along here, uh, 19, 20, 21, and 22, they actually pull the USB ports down to ground. Uh, so what we're going to do is, you can actually put two USB ports on this, but I'm only going to use one for now. I mean, who knows, I might come back later and put something else on it. Um, or you can actually use one for, say, putting a USB flash stick in it if you want to store MP3s on it. Eh, it's up to you. Then you really have an MP3 player instead of a web radio, but that's your choice. I'm going to take those two resistors off on 19 and 20, and then I am going to, according to the USB spec, replace them with 15 kilo ohms with resistance to ground, and then solder those onto a USB sound card which I have around here somewhere but that's for part two and then I'm going to install the uh, regulator there's a nice empty space aboard here so this is where your power comes in I'm pretty sure if we probe about we can find 12 volts around here somewhere and then I'm just going to create a 5 volt mod there using the 5 volt regulator so then I will have ground, I will have 5 volt positive, I'll have USB data positive, USB data negative, everything you need for a USB port. So, um, right, that's the basics of part one. So let's get to it. Here's the 7805, two capacitors on the board. We're going to solder it all together now. Uh, I was going to do a montage but I ended up getting my head in every single shot so everybody knows I'm going grey, we'll leave it at that. Today's hydration is supplied by Jamison's lovely Irish whiskey. Okie dokie, there she is. She's not pretty, but she'll do the job. 12 volts in, 5 volts out, little light to show us that it's working. Now we need to find 12 volts on this board this here is a 1501-33, which is a regulator that provides 3.3 volts to everything else on the board here. So basically we have 12 volts, 3.3 volts available, now we're going to have 5 volts. So I'm going to use my cheapy craptastic multimeter. I think this was 20 bucks off Fleabay. Um, it is so craptastic that the uh, actual positive probe fell off, but there's a little piece of wire. So according to the data sheet, the center pin is ground and the extreme left pin, pin 1, is the supply voltage. So we should get 12 volt there. Yep, there we go, 12 volts. Happy days. So that means that when we connect this guy up in the same way, ground and, tw oop, ground and 12 volts, yay! A shiny green LED. Perfect. So now we're just going to solder that on there and uh, we have an internal 12 volt supply. So here is undeniably the cheapest USB sound card I could find. I think it was around $2.50 on eBay. Uh, it is really, really basic. 3D sound? Yeah, I don't think so. Wow. Blob. Uh, that's it. That's literally all there is to it. There's a crystal, couple of capacitors, a red light to tell me things are working. 
and some really, really shoddy soldering, but it's probably better than mine. So uh, I'm going to take this connector off, because we don't need connectors inside here, and, um, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this part was really, really frustrating. So frustrating, I, I couldn't bring myself to actually film it. So I've removed the two 4.7k ohm resistors that were at RH19 and RH20. You can see the bare pads there and there. And man, that hurt my eyes. And I'm pretty sure the Jamisons didn't help, but they're off. Now I'm going to solder some wrapping wire, very very fine wire, to the IC side of those two and bring them up to my board. Alright, wire soldered. But those will rip off at the first tug, so every maker's friend, liberal amounts of hot glue. Now, if you remember, I said that we need 15k ohms between the data pin on the uh, on the controller and ground, but I only have 10k ohm resistors. But that's not a problem because we can make that work. If you know your uh, resistor calculations, two 10 kilo ohm resistors in parallel are equi equivalent to one 5 kilo ohm resistor. And then we put that in series with one 10 kilo ohm, and we have 15 kilo ohms. So there we are. Six 10 kilo ohm resistors, and uh, put that on the board, take it to ground, and that should make a USB compliant port on that. So let's get that soldered up. More soldering. Okay, soldered. So that there is ground. 10k that way. 5k, these two are in parallel, out to here. So that therefore means that that is 15k from there to ground. I'm going to put the USB sound card on the end here like this. Of course, insulate that off so it doesn't uh, make any contact. And then run the connectors across. Just got to figure out which one of those is data plus and data minus and which one of these is going to be data plus and data minus from the WRT. So there we have it. How cool is that? So I've got the two resistor makes connected up to the data plus and the data minus pin. Ground plus 5 volt coming from my uh, regulator there. All that's left is to get these guys soldered on there and bring the actual USB cables down. I'm going to figure out where to place this. Uh, probably just there. Really. Um, yeah, it's not too critical. But let it hang loose a bit. Uh, but keep these wires as short as possible. The USB data lines nice and short. And uh, that'll be that. Here it goes. Well, just to show, nothing ever works first time around. While I was applying insulating tape to the bottom of this board to stop it from shorting out from, you know, just contacting stuff, gave it a little bit too much of a tug and I managed to rip these off. So uh, I'm going to have to reattach that and hope I didn't damage the tracks. I don't think the tracks are damaged, they look pretty good. But, uh, uh, yeah. Here we go again. So there it is, the final product. Well, at least at the end of part one. Um, I applied a load of more hot glue over there to keep those in place, fixed up the mess I made over there, and uh, stuck this down with a bit of double-sided tape. So it's, uh, it's, it's on there, it's not moving, at least until I want it to move. Um, but that's it then. 
That is a USB sound card attached to a WRT54G version 2. It was never intended to do that, but it is now because I wanted to. So in the next part, we'll go over getting the software set up so that we can actually use this thing to play music and audio out of that little port there. And uh, then we'll have a look at what's going to happen afterwards. It's all well and good having this part working, but what's next? Do we uh, stick it into an existing radio? Do I build a new radio? Do I just plug it into some PC speakers and call it a day? I don't know, uh, but we'll find out soon, or I'll have to make a decision. Uh, I hate making decisions. But anyway, if you enjoyed this, please do subscribe. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. I've included a load of uh, references in the uh, show notes, in the little YouTube description at the bottom. Um, links to the data sheets, links to the, links to the parts I used. Um, you know, it, basically if I made a reference to anything, it's down there somewhere. I'm making sure to include lots of useful data there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys uh, tune in next time, and we'll see where we go from here. Cheers!